Ryan, you and your movie recommendations sure. are going to kill me. Um, <laughs> well, I hope so. No. Uh, in, but in the best possible way. Uh, you put this on my radar a little bit ago, uh, and it's on Apple TV Plus, starring the one and only Tom Hanks, and really only the one and only Tom Hanks yet again. Wow. No, that's uh, not true. Almost. Because, because Caleb Landry Jones was there the majority of the time. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Finch is the film we are talking about. Um, Tom Hanks is basically alone again. Except this time, the thing that he talks to talks back. It's not a volleyball. No. It talks back not just in his head. How about that? Um uh, Finch, uh, a, a, catastrophe, a catastrophe has uh, befallen the earth, uh, and Tom Hanks believes he's the last person left alive, uh, him and his dog, uh, and he he builds a robot, well, as, I think, as you I would th do. I think, I think he believes he's the last trustworthy person. So That's true. He knows, he, he hasn't seen people in a long time. But he he he, he this, knows they're out there. Yes, and and he doesn't want to see them. And that yeah, that's that's probably a more accurate explanation of that. Uh, but he has his dog, uh, and he built a robot to take care of his dog. To, to, to yeah. Specifically, yeah. mission parameter: take care of the dog. He has four laws. It's like the three. It's it's Asimov's three laws, and the fourth law is the dog actually takes precedence over the other three. Yeah. Um, Tom Hanks is not well because uh, because of this uh, event, which uh, if you go out in the sun, you immediately start burning. Basically, your skin starts to bubble. Uh, it is like the worst day at the beach accelerated times 100. Um, and, you know, there's not really a lot of water. There's no plant life. It, it's just as terrible as a post-apocalyptic wasteland could could be, really. Um, and that's the setup. And the setup is Tom Hanks trying to build a robot to take care of his dog for when he expects to die. Which he um, thinks is quickly approaching. Is quickly approaching. Um, and to be fair, this is, uh, this is a few years after the apocalyptic event. It's at least a decade. Yeah. Um, can I, can I first say though, before we get into this, because I hate you for this, uh, <laughs> I do, I, I, I do. And people will understand why in a minute. Um, I'm really, really happy that the, the apocalyptic event in this film was not man caused. It's literally the universe. Yeah. Um, which I, I found refreshing, which means there's no controversy about how we got into the situation we're in. We are just in it uh, because we live in this universe. So uh, that being said, he he needs to, because there's these terrible storm events and one's coming for his base of operations in St. Louis or the St. Louis area, uh, that he has to load his freshly minted robot, who's not really done yet, um, and his dog into this modified recreational vehicle to try to drive west, which is the only place he thinks is safe from the people he doesn't want to deal with. Um, and so we get Tom Hanks teaching this robot how to survive in the world and take care of the dog. I, is, is it any more complicated than that? No, it's a very simple story. It, <laughs> it is a very simple story. It's a man, his dog, and his robot. Yeah, but I, um, but I mean, but... And, and and don't that, that that's not dismissive. It's it's simple, but what what Finch himself is going through is not. Uh, yes. Uh, so the simplicity of the narrative is kind of balanced out by the complexity of of what the character, um, and actually I I would say characters um, are was, are learning from each other. I was about to correct you because because. Um, the robot who doesn't have a name for part of the film, uh, who eventually settles on a name that Finch will allow, yeah, um, is Jeff. 
Yeah, Jeff. Jeff the robot, because there's never been a more robot name than Jeff. Um, Jeff is he's he's kind of like like he's like a five year old. Yeah. Uh, Finch has programmed him and loaded all of this data into him. He like scans books of science and mechanics and anything he thinks robot will need. Now, how to care for a dog, how to train a dog. Um, he scans all that in. So all of that information is in Jeff's head, but he's brand new. Uh, and he doesn't necessarily, it's the interpretation and application of said data yeah. that Jeff is learning. So Jeff, uh, Jeff has infinite amount of knowledge, but no experience to what? really and for every know. for every nugget of knowledge he has a question to go with it sure um which is awesome uh so <laughs> yeah know. but yeah so so tom hanks is answering questions uh and questions uh, answers that should be obvious are not because jeff does not have experience literally it's like his first day on the planet yeah. so there's theoretical knowledge and there's practical knowledge and he lacks the latter. Um, and yes, it's a it's an incredibly simple setup. Um, and it is an incredibly complex and and very deep. Perf uh, uh, meaning behind this very simple setup. Uh, and yeah, we joke that Tom Hanks is by himself again, but he, he really not because he is acting up against um, Caleb Landry Jones. Who, who voices Jeff. Um, and their their chemistry is really good, the man and the robot. Uh, well, and, and not only that, the chemistry between the man, the robot, and the dog, um, Goodyear, is good. Yes. Uh, yes. Which, which I'm not surprised the dog likes Tom Hanks, but the kind of surprise is how much the dog seems to like Jeff. Um, and whether or not that's actually the case, I don't know. But well, he does you know, not I, like Jeff to begin with. Well, no, but I mean, but <laughs> so ultimately, but there's, I mean, we don't. Uh, if Goodyear is not a good actor, <laughs> right? There's, there's aspects of this film that don't work. That but because they were able to get a performance out of this dog, that is is as endearing as the performance they get out of a robot and its human companion, uh, if not more so. I mean, there's just a lot of things in this film that should not work. Uh, no, it's, so I when, mean, <laughs> you, you read it on paper, it's, it's, it's silly. I mean, it's, it's almost well, it's, silly. Sure. And, 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 and you, you, and, and when you approach it, you think, okay, a man, a dog and a robot go on a cross country trip. Okay. How hard could that be to make? Well, you know, you're dealing with a dog. You're dealing with uh, a lot of uh, visual effects. You've got puppeteers. You've got, um, I mean, there there are so many, It you know, people look at this film and think, well, gosh, you know, how, how, how there's like three people. And the truth of the matter is, is there were probably 30 people doing each of these scenes. Right. Um, and, and the complexity of that is um, pretty astounding because you forget that that's probably what's happening. You know, I mean, it, it's it's just you and these three individuals. And yeah, the dog actually feels like his own little character in the film. Yes. Um, and I mean, for some reason, it, it just all comes together. And I think Tom Hanks isn't playing the typical Tom Hanks character in this film. He, He's kind of a well. He's definitely given up. He's he's bitter towards uh, humanity. Um, again, they may not have caused the apocalypse, but the reaction to the apocalypse, whatever it was exactly, was not good. Um, and I don't think that's far fetched. Um, you know, uh, disaster comes and we you know protect our own and become selfish and take care of ourselves, um, whatever the cost. Uh, I don't think it's a far-fetched idea but no um, but anyway but you know i mean so tom hanks isn't even like the really the the the, the, the optimism in this film but it's strangely optimistic uh you know they really the optimism belongs to a robot right um, it belongs it belongs to jeff tom hanks 
uh, Finch is he's he's resigned to his fate. He's almost ashamed that he's still alive. Sure. And in many ways, he is blatantly ashamed. Well, and to there, still unless, be alive. Well, and he doesn't want to remember that there was anything before. Um, and that's where things get complicated because his relationship with this robot ultimately reminds him what it was like to interact with people he actually liked rather than people he was running or hiding from. Right. And, and that that's problematic for Finch um, because you get the impression that he has spent the better part of the last 10 years forcing himself to forget these things. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, here he is now at the, the end of his days being forced to, you know, undo the, the work that he spent a decade doing essentially. Uh, well, and even, uh, you know, even as, you know, as we learned through his conversations with Jeff, um, you know, that, that started before. Yeah. He was not, an outgoing he wasn't a people person i mean he wasn't mean or nasty he just wasn't he yeah. very much liked to be to be by himself he did like some people though some people but the the problem with liking to be by yourself is that w when that's a choice you're okay with it yeah and now he's in a he lives in a world where that is not a choice that's a necessity and and that that you know when something goes from being a choice to being a necessity that changes your outlook um you know, I love chocolate ice cream. Oh, all you can eat is chocolate ice cream. You know, 10 years of that, I'm going to hate chocolate ice cream. So, uh, you know, anything it can, you know, you can, un you can unlike a lot of things in 10 years. Uh, and, 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 and he has, and Jeff just kind of brings that to a head. Yeah. Um, because it puts it right back in his face. He's forgotten that he, you know, he, he didn't like, he liked to be on his own. He, you know, made himself for remember or you know forget that there was ever anyone else so he was okay on his own and then jeff reminded him no i'm not really okay yeah. so it's it is there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of a lot of of depth to it and god damn you ryan <laughs> i i so everyone that listens knows that I, ryan is not the one that uses bad language uh, on this podcast and i texted him when it was over and i just said "fuck finch with the little crying emoji uh <laughs> because God and I think, damn it. But I think I think I also responded with uh, I think I said what the white suit. So <laughs> the white suit. Because I that I mean like the white suit is is if if, if you were sitting on the fence and were like, do I do this movie? Do I not do this movie? And they came in and said, You'll get to wear this. Yes. Yeah, he was in. <laughs> He's in. <laughs> It'd be like uh, okay. All right, I'll do it for the whites. Right. Uh, but, oh, man, I, oh, that, I mean, dude, I, yes, I cry at sports movies. Uh, you still, I still have trouble with, with, you know, Hoosiers. Uh, goddamn Sam Raimi's for love of the game. Uh, fucking Finch. God damn mm -hmm. that robot and that dog. Uh, at the end, what would Finch do? He'd feed the dog. I'm going to feed the dog. And I was like, <laughs> screw you. Well, Jeff. Uh, but, but here's the thing. OK, so there is, you know, Amblin Entertainment, which is Steven Spielberg's company, uh, did was one of the production production houses on this. So there is an absolutely Steven Spielberg feel to this film. But there's also it's almost a not a Steven Spielberg ending. It all, I, but it is and it isn't. And, and that's kind of what I think is fascinating about it is because um, uh, it, it, it there, there is something hopeful about it. If the film itself isn't exactly the happiest of endings. No, it, no, but but there is, but there is hope, um, and not just well maybe, but Jeff is enthusiastic about the idea. Yeah. So uh, let's and you're right. Okay. So Amblin is is Spielberg. Uh, the the film is uh, directed by Miguel Sapochnik. Yeah. Uh, who I you know I looked at his filmography as a director. Lots of television. Yeah. Uh, I, some Game I of Thrones, he, Altered yeah. Carbon, Iron yeah. Fist, Masters of Sex, True Direct. I mean, but if you look at the what you know he's done sci-fi, uh, he's done drama, Revolution, Banshee, Fringe. Um, 
And then he directed Repo Men with Jude Law. Yeah. Um, Mixed, so mixed it's, bag there. <laughs> it, well, yeah, but I mean, but there's a there's a rather eclectic bunch of material uh, that he's directed. You know, um, he's going to do some uh, House of the Dragon, the the Game of Thrones prequel. Um, but yeah, it's. I was like, wow, that's. I mean, it's kind of a. This this might be the biggest thing he's done. Uh, have, have, did you, here, here's one thing you know. I don't know if you've looked at the writers and their backgrounds. Uh, uh, I have it. I did not. What have they there is there? I asked. There is there is one of them who has oh, wow. not written before, but has produced some of the greatest science fiction films in the history of science fiction. If you, uh, if oh, you mean uh, Ivor Powell? Yes. Uh, yeah, I just I just pulled him up. Oh, produced Blade Runner, Alien, The Duelist. Yeah. So uh, I mean, there's there's some interesting things if you dig beneath the surface on this film that 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 kind of where you go, okay, I I, I get a sense of of why this, well, not maybe on the level of Blade Runner or Alien or you know, but th- there's a sense of of people working within uh, the uh, an area that they're experts in and that they know the nuance of and um i don't know i i mean i i don't know that finch is a game changer uh, i don't know that it it, it but it, it it certainly is a very very entertaining and good film that, no, in fact i'm shocked that these guys have three films between them and one of the and the common one is finch yeah, yeah, having written them, but then you look at you know the I mean, and even the other writer he has one producer credit Finch, yeah. so and another his other writing credit is announced. It's not even pre production yet. Yeah, I, I think I think, and I could be wrong on this, but I think the script ended up on the blacklist uh, um, uh, as as one of those you know, which is a list of basically unproduced. Uh, um, screenplays that are are highly regarded right um, but uh yeah there's i mean there's again this this movie could have been terrible and uh, and maybe you know and maybe it should have been terrible i don't know but but i think that you have you you put certain people into something and the results um surpass maybe what they should have been but. yeah this this is a this is one of those films that uh you know is greater than the sum of its parts and, and we've reviewed a lot of films uh, and, and i know that i have that i've described as you know either less than the sum of their parts or exactly yeah. the sum of their parts uh, I mean, there's nothing about it doesn't go anywhere over what it is you read it you see the cast you go yep that's what you're going to get and that's exactly what you get or do you get less than that for some reason this is a film that i mean it punches way above its weight yeah. um, in, in total. I mean, just that, that it, it is insane. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know how just the script yeah. wound up as being, I mean, it had to be, it had to be blacklisted because someone looked at it and said, you know, if I can do this, this, you know, because you're right, this, this movie could suck. This, this script could suck. If it's yeah. done wrong or with the wrong people, well, it's it, it lends itself to sentimentality, and yes, it's a sentimental movie, and and that some people won't like it purely right. for, for that reason, or they'll rage against it because of that. Um, but I, I, sometimes movies need to be sentimental. Sometimes uh, the character's journey needs, you know, this is needs that sentimentality to a certain extent to uh, rediscovering and, of 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 you know that emotion and 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 maybe i mean and so is a is there a better actor to put in that role then than tom hanks well i i Captain here's sentimentality. the sentimentality well because but here's the thing that i think is interesting about that is is because um because tom hanks is cast as finch we want finch um he instant the moment Finch is on screen, we want to like him, you know, and that's that's a reflection of of Tom Hanks in his career, yeah. Um, and 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 we want him to be able to work through whatever it is he needs to work through. We we you know, but Finch as a character is is very 
you know, almost to the point where he doesn't want to work through these things. He's he Finch is very not Tom Hanks. Um, he wants he wants to be done. Yes. So you know, a lot of people people want to compare this to Castaway, and the big difference here is is Finch doesn't want off the island. Finch right. wants to die on the island. That the dude that is a perfect way to put it. So absolutely perfect because they're so which is so radically different. The two films are on just such polar opposites that you know that yes on the superficial element Tom Hanks is the person on the poster and there was really nobody else in the movie you know with a human face right but they the, the two films have almost nothing else in common so right. um, which you know which is great actually so it's not Tom Hanks redoing something he's already done this is Tom Hanks doing something that maybe is a little different than what he's done before yeah I mean, even, you know, the survivability aspect, if you would like to expand the cast a little bit and go to Apollo 13, there were other people yeah. and he was trying to survive. And again, in this one, it's almost like he he really he's building Jeff so he can be done mm -hmm. um, because he knows he's going to be done. And, and he's playing out the string and as, he doesn't as they he, play, as they put it in sports. He doesn't want to die. You know, and this isn't, I guess, necessarily about leaving an afterlife or anything, but he doesn't want his deathbed thoughts to be who's going to take care of good here. So in, in a way, what he's doing is also very selfish um, yes. because he's looking to free himself from the last thing that connects him to this world. Yeah, that is, that is also true. That's, that's like his, he loves the dog that is nothing but an outward expression of his guilt. Yeah. Um, for reasons that you will see when you watch the film, and you will watch the film uh, if you have <laughs> if you have Apple TV Plus. This honestly, this this would play great in a theater. It was it was originally intended to be, and and that's kind of it's it's uh, it's unfortunate that I won't have that opportunity to see it in the theater. But I do love the accessibility of it, and I hope that people um take advantage of that um i think this i think this was originally universal had planned this for a theatrical release and covid has a way of uh you know COVID. doing stuff um but in, but oddly you know it's also a film that i think is very timely um a lot of people who doubt in mankind and humankind and well, people suck. Eh, but as I've know, said on multiple occasions, people sure. suck. And, and to be fair, uh, let's remember, I'm people, so well, yes, I can say yes. that. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. No, this it is. It is. No, it's it. It's. I, I think at any time, this movie is really good. I think. Yeah. It might take a breath. People watch Finch. Take a breath and think for two minutes, and you know just. Rethink your life, if you will. Uh, it's this is just sillily good. And again, it, it could have been so terrible. And I applaud a Tom Hanks for taking what you are correct is such a superficially similar role to something he already did, um, and for bringing with it or bringing to it um, the exact kind of opposite mindset that he did in that superficially similar film, um, and knocking it out of the park uh caleb landry jones let's not yes. not talk about him uh voices jeff um he's he shows up in a lot of things he's just one of those you know one of those actors that you know not leading man good looks but you watch him and his performances are always compelling yeah he's, in whatever he's, a, he's playing he's, he's a workman yeah he's, he's uh, um yeah so he so he's and he's got a great voice for Jeff. The way he performs Jeff is just really good. Uh, I mean, because he's oh yes, he's 30, 30, 31, 32, something like that. But yeah. he, you know, he you feel five year old toddler Jeff. Sure. I mean in all of his questions. The sense of wonder. 
yes, everything's amazing or needs to be understood. Well, and, and it's it's amazing without any of the dark bits. Like, you know, everything everything is viewed just as is. And, right. And without a, a negativity or a sense of judgment, it just is. And the fact that it is, is wondrous. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I I'd, wish, I wish that I could reconnect <laughs> with that feeling. Right. Uh, go, go, go to the national parks and walk around and you kind of get that feeling again. Um, my, my, aside from what would Finch do, he'd feed the dog line. I think my favorite line is, uh, of his is, or favorite scene of his is when uh, Finch comes out and he goes, did you drive the RV? <laughs> no, <laughs> but it rolled. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just, it, I mean, that like every seven year old, <laughs> you know? Uh... <laughs> so I no, he's great. And again, good year. You're right. If you don't have a dog that's going to hit his marks and, and, and cock his head and, pause appropriately i mean and not like in a cut like in a scene he'll he like would stop and pause and cock his head and and but it was it was literally hitting all the marks in a scene uh, they got a great dog for for him uh and his well, I, believe, I believe who was a rescue dog i'm shocked most rescue dogs are really good uh, the, I, I've, I've, I've seen the, the, the animal wranglers talk about that. Yeah, the rescued dogs and cats that want, you know, if you rescue them, they, they want to please. So they're willing to learn and, and they do really well. And, you know, Je uh, Jeff Goodyear is uh, kind of like the ultimate rescue dog. Oh, gosh, yes. So, yeah. It, but yeah, it's a, if, 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 if Caleb Landry Jones is portrayal of Jeff doesn't work and Goodyear is not such a good dog. Tom Hanks performance doesn't really matter that much because then he would be just be playing against a robot and a dog, yeah. you know, and he already proved he can, he can perform against a, a volleyball, but you know, come on, let's cut again, up some slack. Again. Well, and, and again, that's a completely different, it's a completely different performance. Yeah. Um, I, you know, uh, castaways, um, there's, there's less going on underneath the surface and a castaway, you know, it's what a he much wants darker is, film too. Well, yeah, but it's, you know, and it's, it's, yeah, there's, it's a different simplicity. Whereas, right. the, you know, the, 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 the character is more complex and more tortured in a psychological way. And, uh, it, you know, a lot of, a lot of Tom Hanks has to communicate a lot of things just his eyes a little you know because it's also i mean he doesn't want jeff to lose that sense of wonder and so as much as he wants to teach jeff about the world and how dangerous it is he almost regrets having to do that because he wants none of that weight to be passed on right and so there's there's a lot going on in this character and, there I, is. and so there's a lot of tom hanks gets to act a ton in this movie and it's it's fun to watch yeah it is um so finch uh premieres on apple tv friday november 5th um i am so glad i have access to apple tv mm -hmm. um well and if you, you you can follow this up with greyhound which is another the Tom Hanks film that's on Apple TV that or or if you want to go for some family stuff there's the helpsters or there's I mean it, it, it or if I, you want some heavy sci-fi foundation is on there there you go yeah. um uh if, so if you watched if you watched Dune and you thought you know I want something like that but more of but that more <laughs> yeah then foundation uh, you should be watching the foundation yes so Anyway, yeah. Apple TV is is it doesn't have the the biggest roster, but I, I, you know, I mean, and people are probably sick of hearing this, but most of what you know, there's a few things that they've snuck out there that they haven't really uh, done a lot of advertising for, and, and so there's a few things on there that I haven't watched, but most of the stuff that I've seen on there has been pretty pretty interesting, um, and, and I, 
to what five ninety nine. So I, I I I don't know. I'm I don't have to pay for it, which is nice. But uh, but yeah, no, it it is not a lot. It might be five ninety nine. It might be yeah. the uh, which is pound, which pound is pound for pound. That that's a pretty. I mean, uh, quality it, quality to cost. You're getting yes. you're getting your money's worth. Yeah, on this film alone, <laughs> so. right? That's crazy, crazy goddamn robot. Uh, so yeah, so that's it. That's that that is uh, that is Finch. Uh, I've cursed at this movie enough. Uh, that that is Finch. It opens Friday, November fifth. Apple TV Plus. Uh, if they have a, if they have, uh, you know, a trial period, they do. And you have a long weekend. <laughs> watch this. Watch Greyhound. Binge Foundation if you're a science fiction fan. And then anything else that's on the list, you're probably gonna be okay with. Um, they've got music documentaries if you're a music person. Yeah. Uh, so they, you know they got a few of those. There's a Beastie Boys. There's a Velvet oh. Underground. There's yeah. There's and some, Ted uh, Lasso. Oh, and Ted Lasso. And Ted yeah. Lasso. There you go. That's your weekend. You got Tom <laughs> Hanks, you got Foundation, and you got Ted Lasso. Go get Apple TV Plus. That will, that pays for itself. Pays for itself with those. I'm not even joking. Ted Lasso is stupid good. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, Apple TV Plus definitely check it out. There's way more than enough to justify the five ninety nine. So um, it feels like we're being paid to do this but we're not and we are not uh if they paid for me i don't know that i could gush anymore if they were paying us uh i don't think i could uh i'm not that good i'm not i feel like i feel like i need to say something like this like negative so uh, i i will say that cherry is a letdown there you go there's the it's it's not as good as it should be it's yeah anyway so yeah it's not bad it's just not as i I feel better about myself now there you okay fine i said something negative you said something negative. There you go. That is it. Uh, everyone hang with us. We've got more big movies coming out. We will be talking about those. Uh, everyone uh, keep keep Ryan in your in your in your thoughts. <laughs> He's going to be flying to England yeah. uh, here soon. So let's hope that his flights don't get canceled um, yeah. for lack oh. of personnel uh, mm-hmm. and that he survives the wilds of of England. So. Uh, I that's will, it. I, yeah, I will be doing my my own tiny little tour of Soho. Uh, and so, if, you know, if you haven't seen Last Night in Soho, can I put a plug in for you can? Yep, absolutely. Uh, watch it. Listen to our review and let us know that we're right. <laughs> or if we're completely wrong. We are. We just, are not completely wrong. Just, people that think we're wrong are wrong. Which is uh, just, <laughs> just just see Edgar Wright's new film. Anyway, see Edgar um, Wright's new film. There you go. And, and then follow it up with with Finch. So, you know, right? That's some. Oh man, that'd be a great double feature. Uh, okay, that's it. We're done. Stay safe, everyone. Be good. Don't forget to like us. Follow us on social media at VS Movie Podcast. You know the drill. Subscribe on YouTube if you watch us there. And until next time, I'm Mark. That's Ryan. Bye, Ryan. See you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later.